Hi everyone and welcome to another lesson with me, Cara. So I'm an English teacher here in Australia and I also teach English online on YouTube and on Facebook, which is what I'm doing right now. So um, if this is your first time watching me, I am doing a 30 day Corona English challenge where I try to teach every day for 30 days on both YouTube and Facebook. Um, but normally I have a new video on YouTube every Sunday. So how are you all today? Please say hello in the comments. Hi Sawar. Hi Carrie. Um, in Australia, where I am at the moment, it is Saturday night at 9 p.m. What time is it where you are? let me know. Hi Jane, good to see you again. I hope these lessons are useful for you. So tomorrow is Easter Sunday. So if you are celebrating Easter, I hope you have a really great Sunday, whatever you are doing. I know it will be different this year for everyone. So Salwa is asking you a question straight away. Could you please let me know when to add ed after the at the end of the word I have received or I res or received? Mm, Salwa, this is probably just a question about tense, um, and I have a few videos about tense. So um, your first sentence is a uh, present perfect. So if you look up Present Perfect on our website or on my YouTube channel, there are lots of videos about that. Hi, Clasio. Good to see you and Yuri, Abdella. It's 10 a.m. in Brazil. And good morning for everyone in Brazil. So Edmonton as well. Okay, so today, as you can see, we are at day 14. And we're going to do a very short reading um, exercise. So we're going to read a short article um, about um, a good news story from the coronavirus. And then I'm just going to choose some vocabulary and a little bit of grammar from here to teach you. Hi, Maria. Okay. So, a nice story, oops, let me just, so a nice story came out of Italy a couple of weeks ago about how people were getting through, enduring the pandemic. Did you hear the story? I think it was very famous everywhere. A really nice story from Italy. Of course, Italy is really struggling. So. It was nice to hear something where the community was coming together. Ah, namaste from Nepal. Okay, so it's also a Saturday night for you. And the afternoon in Egypt. How interesting. Trika. Nice to see you. I don't know if I've seen you very many times. So does anybody, did anybody see this story? There was a video. Um, can you tell me what happened? So in some parts of Brazil it is 9 a.m. and some parts it's 10 a.m. So some parts of Brazil you are 12 hours behind us. So 
So Trika says, yeah, does that mean you read this story or you saw this story? I know it was very famous in Australia and lots of people um, were talking about it and I think lots of people have copied the idea which is really nice. No? Okay. Well, let's have a read. So I'm going to read it through once and then we will look at some of the vocabulary and also the grammar. So Italians sing patriotic songs from their balconies during the coronavirus lockdown. Italians have been singing from their balconies across the country in an effort to boost morale during its nationwide lockdown that began, began this week due to COVID-19. Videos of Italian neighbours singing together have been appearing on social media after Italy's Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte announced the restrictions that shut down virtually all daily life and left only grocery stores, banks and pharmacies open. So, the vocabulary, let me just highlight the words we'll look at. So we've got, oops, what? Patriotic. Balconies. Boost. Morale. Lockdown. And virtually. So these are the words that we're going to look at today. But if there are other words in this text that you don't know, please just write them in the comments. So the first words we've got is balcony or the plural balconies. And of course, that's this the this is the the railings and then where they're standing is the balcony does your house have a balcony so this picture is actually about the story so these two men are playing their instruments on their balcony in Italy and all of their neighbors were doing the same thing so they were playing their songs together. Uh, so just quickly, so balcony is a noun. Oops. And balcony, three syllables, balcony. We stress the first one. Balcony. Balcony. So does your house have a balcony? All right. Next word. And this is about the kind of songs they were singing. Patriotic. Patriotic. So this is showing love for your country. And so the songs that we were singing were probably about Italy and how beautiful, how wonderful Italy is. Good question, Yuri. So Yuri's asked a grammar question and that's what I was also going to talk about. So we'll get to that very soon. Okay, so pay tree are tick four syllables patriotic and can you hear where the stress is remember we always stress just one syllable patriotic patriotic good and 
yeah, so Clesio's apartment has a balcony. Very good. I hope you have a nice view. All right, next word. Boost. Boost. So just one syllable, boost, and it's a verb. Um, it can also be a noun. And it means to help or encourage something to increase or improve. So it can be a verb, it can be a noun. In our text today, it's a verb. Boost. So make something increase or improve. And we're going to boost morale. Okay, so this word only has two syllables. So we don't pronounce this, yeah? But we stress the second one. Morale. Morale. And morale is how a group or individual feels, how confident or enthusiastic they are. So let's go back. Oh, so it's a noun. Let me write that in. Let's go back to the text. So you can see here. to boost morale. So that means to increase um, the confidence and the happiness and the enthusiasm of the people. So they sang songs to make everyone happier, to boost morale. You might also um, hear it maybe at work, so they might do um, an activity, a team building activity, or <clears throat> the CEO or the, the um, chairperson or the president might make a speech to try to um, cheer everyone up or make everyone um, work harder, and that could be to boost morale. M-A says Royal Royale. Yeah, so the same pronunciation. Same pronunciation. All right, our next word. Lockdown. Lockdown. So, two syllables. And we stress the first one. Lockdown. So, state of isolation or restricted access. It's not used very often. Um, it might be used in a prison, in a jail, but at the moment we are using it all the time to talk about if your country or your state is in lockdown. So we say, um, are you in, in lockdown? So it's a noun. Um, and that means that, well, in Australia, it means that you cannot go outside your house. Maybe you can only go to go to the supermarket and the pharmacy. Okay. And virtually, so this is an adverb. Virtually, just three syllables, and we stress the first one, virtually, virtually, and it means nearly or almost, so virtually everyone, or I spent virtually all my money, so nearly all my money. 
So let's have a test and look at the text again and try to fill in the gap. So if you know the answer to one of them, just write the number and the answer. It doesn't matter which order. And if you have any other questions about the vocabulary, let me know. Okay, we've got some answers. So, number one is patriotic. Good. That was MA. MA, well done. And also balconies. Close here, well done. We've got balconies and MA got morale. Good. Five. MA got a lot of those very quick. Um, where are you from, MA? So Yuri's asked a question. I mean, lockdown is the same as I'm under quarantine. Which one is right to you? Okay, so lots of questions there. I'm just going to paste it into the document so that everyone can see. So this is Yuri's question. Okay, so I think it depends on your country. So I don't want to speak for other countries and I'm not a, an expert on um, the coronavirus, but my understanding in Australia is lockdown is when the government says that everybody must stay at home and quarantine is when you are at risk maybe you have the coronavirus or you you might have it and therefore you only must stay at home or you must go to a quarantine center so 
in Australia now, if you are arriving by plane, you must go <coughs> into quarantine um, for um, two weeks and that's in a hotel. But if the government says we are in lockdown, everybody must stay home. So that's this question. In on, okay, so we say in quarantine. So for example, we are in quarantine because we caught the virus, for example. Um, remember in two is with movement. So I said people arriving to Australia must go into quarantine. So if you're talking about the movement somewhere, we say into quarantine. If we're just saying where you are, in quarantine. So I hope that makes sense and you don't need a or the for quarantine. Uh, Egypt, there you go. All right. So now the grammar. And we have, let me choose a different color. Oops. Maybe I'll highlight this better. Have been singing. So we have this tense twice. Five people. Shrewd Ishmael, only five people. I'm not sure what your question is. Um, so what tense is this? Have been singing or have been appearing? Can anybody tell me the name of the tense? What's the name of this tense? Have been singing. M.A. Very good. Present perfect continuous. Yeah, it is hard to understand. Present perfect continuous. Well done, Abdullah, Yuri, Carol. Excellent. So, um, Clesio. Yes. Present perfect and it's present perfect continuous. Do you know why? So why is it... I think Yuri said it should be past continuous. Um, uh, okay, so when this happened, which was a couple of weeks ago, the article was written and the um, people were singing on their balconies regularly. So it had started in the past but in the recent past, so maybe one day before or two days before, and it was probably going to continue later. So if I draw a quick timeline, uh, let me go to it here. 
Okay. So, if this is now, this is the past, this is the future, and maybe people saying like every evening. So it happens here, it happens here, and most likely it would continue in the future. We don't know, but this was something that had started and was continuing because the now was when the article was written. So when it becomes something that is likely to continue, we use the present perfect continuous. Okay, if we go back. And it's the same for this example. So videos of Italian neighbors singing together have been appearing on social media. So probably it was on Facebook one day and then the next day it was on Facebook again and then it was on YouTube, then it was on Instagram and it was repeating. So it started in the recent past, it's happening now and it will continue. Okay, um, but you're right, Yuri. Present perfect continuous is difficult to understand, especially when you're thinking about present perfect simple. Um, if you would like to practice, I'm just going to copy a link for you. And put it here so we have present perfect continuous versus simple and I'll post that in the comments now Yeah, so MA, beautiful. So it happened in the recent past, still happening in the present and likely to continue in the future. All right, so I'm just sending you a link. Um, and then if you want to watch that video, I think it is quite clear. And then I have some exercises to practice the difference between continuous and simple present perfect. It should be coming through. Um, also, I every month I have a reading lesson, which is similar to this one, but it's better. It's longer, and I have lots of different articles. And I'll post that. Oh, let me select it. Okay. What have I done? I'll just do that. Okay. Yes, yes. So you're right. Often from the context, you can use simple or continuous, but continuous really stresses that it's going to continue. All right, so I'm sending you a link to my... Um, other reading lessons and then I think you know this link now so this one is to all of the corona um, English challenges I don't know if they're going through we'll see um, you're welcome Carrie please let me know if you're receiving the links I think it's not working Well, thank you very much for watching um, another lesson. So this was lesson number 14. So tomorrow is 15, which is halfway. 
and tomorrow we're going to do some grammar to have something done so always a useful grammar lesson um, please let me know if there's anything you would like me to teach and I hope you have a wonderful Easter Sunday if you're celebrating tomorrow whatever you are doing